You guys, welcome back. I suspect it's going to rain soon, and on days like this, I crave comforting snacks. Today, I'll be making curry puffs, a Thai version of the samosa. It has a firm puff pastry texture with a flavorful curry filling. Let's get started. I'll start by prepping ingredients for the filling. There are a few steps here to make the curry puff that involve boiling, stir-frying, dough making, and deep frying. It's not difficult to make, but good things take some time. When choosing potatoes, try to get a variety that has a creamier flesh. This was all I had on hand, otherwise I would have chosen a different variety, but this will do just fine. The goal is to boil the potatoes long enough so that they are fork tender but still hold their shape. They'll be going through another cooking process later and we want to prevent them from crumbling apart. Time to make the filling. On medium heat, let's create something delicious. I'm looking for savory flavors here. As for curry powder, Use your favorite brand, they will all work well here. Just note that if your curry powder contains salt in it, you'll need to adjust the amount of other salty ingredients being added into this filling. Yellow color of this curry powder comes from turmeric. Be careful, it will stain your clothes. The sugar will round out the flavors. The vinegar here is not for making this filling sour, it's for lifting and brightening everything up and balancing the heavy flavors. Curry puff dough is made up of two different doughs. They're super simple to make. We'll need an outer and an inner dough. Let's start by making the outer dough. The cold butter will give a flaky texture to the dough. Oil. Salt. Gradually add water in little by little. all-purpose flour and oil 
gradually add the oil in. sticks together and can break apart like this while holding shape. The two doughs will give the final dough a distinct, firm puff pastry texture. Rest for an hour. After an hour, let's combine the two doughs together into one. After resting, the dough feels much fluffier and softer and more uniform. Cut the dough into equal portions. Roll portions into balls. I was able to get seven out of this. And for the inner dough, we need seven pieces too. We need equal numbers of outer pieces to inner pieces. It should be smaller in size compared to the outer dough pieces because we're going to be using the outer dough to wrap the inner dough. The key is to press the outer dough onto the inner dough and press out as much air as possible. Let's rest this for 30 minutes. Flour will be your best friend, so nothing sticks. Be generous in flouring your working surface and your rolling pin, and also a bit of the dough itself. Let's form a log here. We're going to roll this out. Roll as tightly as you can.
We're going to flatten this out and roll it out again. Now we can cut it. Each of these halves will make one curry puff. First, flatten it out with the palm of your hand, and then roll it out thinly. What helps me here is to use enough flour so the dough doesn't stick to the surface. And the flour also helps to hold the dough together when flattening it out. Add enough filling, but not too much, otherwise it won't be able to close properly. So we want to add enough filling here, but not too much, otherwise it won't be able to close properly. Seal the edges any way you like. This is how I do it. It's not perfect, but it will ensure that the filling stays in when frying. Let's do it again once more. It's okay if the edges come apart a little bit, just use a dab of water to stick them back together.
You can first seal the edges with a dab of water if they're not sticking together. A dab really goes a long way. Too much water will also make it very hard to close. Time to fry. We'll need enough oil to deep fry. I like using a strainer for individual puffs that may be darkening too quickly due to the contact with the hot pan. It acts as a nice barrier and gives me more control over the color of the curry puffs. Here it is, curry puffs, the Thai version of samosas. The inside is packed with so much flavor. The potato still holds shape, but it's creamy when you bite into it. The dough is like a crispy, firm puff pastry. It's so good, and it tastes great the next day as well. Thank you so much for making it to the end here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video. Be safe, everyone.